Hello family, we thank God for today. We bless him for all he's done and all he's yet to do. Today, I want to carry on with the subtopic um, that we're looking at um, this year, which is righteous living. And my focus is loving people. I will read my first passage of scripture is Matthew chapter 5. And I'm going to read from verse 43 to verse 50. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor, fellow man, and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love, that is, and selfishly seek the best or higher good for your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may show yourselves to be the children of your father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun shine on those who are evil and on those who are good and makes the rain fall on the righteous those who are morally upright and the unrighteous the unrepentant those who oppose him for if you love only those who love you what reward do you have do not even the tax collectors do that and if you greet only your brothers wishing them god's blessing and peace what more than others are you doing? Do not even the Gentiles who do not know the Lord do that? You, therefore, will be perfect, growing into spiritual maturity, both in mind and character, actively integrating godly values into your daily life, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Many of us will be familiar with this passage of scripture, particularly the section that talks about loving our enemies and praying for those who persecute us. And I know that I've covered this in previous episodes for those that follow this podcast. But today I wanted to look at the fact that when Jesus was giving the people all the kind of elaboration on the things that he expects of them to do. He wasn't just focusing on loving one's enemies, but if you look at this whole passage, he was talking about how in our dealings with people, we are to demonstrate the love of God. And so, for example, he talks about how you cannot only greet somebody that's because of the close relationship you have with a person or you decide that it's only a certain group of people I will greet and not a particular group of people um, just because you choose to maybe show favoritism or because you don't dislike the other group of people and so on. So in this passage, he was talking about how as his children or the children of God, we are to walk in love and how we are to demonstrate love. And he uses God's own way of demonstrating love to all people as the basis for what he shares in that he says that God Almighty, who is the God of love, who is the God who is holy and has called us to live a life of holiness. God is so holy that sin cannot be associated with him in any way, shape or form. Yet this God who is holy Without sin, hate sin, sin cannot in any way find its presence in, the, in, in, in it, it before Almighty God. This same God, who is our Father, the Bible says, and Jesus said to them, that he makes his sun rise on those who are evil and on those who are good, and makes the rain fall on the righteous and the unrighteous, the unrepentant, those who oppose him. And I want you to cast your mind back to the Garden of Eden. Satan had been banished from heaven because he had rebelled against God. But the same God, although he's a, he's, he's, he hates injustice, he hates sin, did not immediately destroy Satan and all the angels that fell with him or rebelled against God with him. He cast them out of heaven. When Adam and Eve sinned against God, God knew they had sinned. And they told God that they had disobeyed when God had that um, discourse with them. This same God who 
had made up his mind that he was going they well he had obviously made the 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 conditions for if they were to disobey him and so go to Annas's word they needed to leave um, the present um, Eden but before he sends them away he gives them clothing he makes covering for them although they have sinned and that is the nature of the almighty God that we serve and I've not read books or followed so many other religions at all but one thing that I know based on some of the excerpts and things I've heard of other religions and other idols and gods that people serve our God Jehovah Almighty God the maker of the heavens and the earth the one who is the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit is the only one who does not punish or say because you've done XYZ he disowns you and he maltreats you and he doesn't give you a chance to even show remorse or or doesn't even give you a chance to to make make it right he's the one who is full of love not only is God full of love but he is love so I unlike you and I who will sometimes have to pray that God will help us to love other people including our enemies including those who persecute us God doesn't have to pray he doesn't have to rely on an external source to have love. He is love. And a few days ago, the example he gave me is this. Imagine sugar. You have sugar in your house and we all know sugar. Sugar has been designed. The natural sugar we know, it is meant to sweeten something. Now, if I get two heaps full, um, spoonful of, of sugar and I had a cup of tea, for example, and I put it in that cup of tea, there's no way I will be expecting that cup of tea to not be sweet because the natural thing that sugar does is to sweeten a thing because it's, it's in its DNA. Nothing and no one can do anything about it. You cannot take it away. If I don't want to sweeten my tea, I do not have to put that sugar in. But so long as I put that two, two, two hip, um, tablespoonfuls of sugar in my tea, it is bound to sweeten that tea. It is the same with God. God is love. But it is only those who draw close to him who experience his love, who seek after him, who experience his love. So just like uh, I can have sugar in my house, that sugar might be in the jar. You might have sugar in your house. But unless you go and you take that sugar and you place it into that thing you want to sweeten it, the sugar will still be sitting there. It does not mean that sugar is not sweet. It is the same with God. And so when God is saying to you and I that we are to love those that we will classify as unlovable, we are to love those who persecute us, we are to not love them only, but one way we know we love them is that we will pray for them. God wants us to or is wanting you and I to be like him, the one who causes the sun to shine on, the, the, um, on behalf or for the benefit of both the unjust and the just. So I want to quickly share with you a few passages of scripture. Luke 6, 35 says, But love your enemies and do good, then lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Romans 12, 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Luke 23, 34. Jesus himself demonstrates this. And it says, And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. Even on the cross, Jesus was still able to show love. And that is what God is calling you and I to. And do I want to give the indication that it is easy to do? No, it's not because we're human beings. But it is his Holy Spirit alone that can help us to be able to pray for those who persecute us. To be able to show love to those that we, and the natural instincts we will know that that person doesn't deserve love 
And so today as I share this, my prayer is that if there are people that are despised, despise you, people who are persecuting you, people who are unkind to you, it could be in a work situation, it could be even in a family situation, and oh, I've had my fair share of that in many aspects of my life, work-wise, some going back years ago, some even going back to when I was in school and so on and so forth. Some of them I was able to let go, some I don't even remember, some you sometimes remember and you remember it with some pain, but because the Spirit of God is working in us, we're able to overlook all of that. But Jesus wants us to be those people who will still be able to show kindness and be gracious to people that the world will say do not deserve it. And so, Father, today, we just really ask that you help us because you want us to be wholly righteous. And one of the ways that we know that we're righteous people is how we relate with those who hate us, who despise us, who are evil. And as sometimes people use the phrase that you love the sinner, but not the sin, that is what you call us to. So Father, where we are facing challenges in this area, where there are people that we have to deal with, Lord Jesus, and we're really struggling to show them love, even though we know your word says we're to do so, I pray that your Holy Spirit will help us. Help us, O oh God, to have a new perspective and just do something in our hearts, Father, that we will have compassion for those people. We will begin to feel compassion, knowing that those people really that Lord God Almighty, they are not the ones of God who have the upper hand, that their life is full, miserable, and sorrowful. Because, Father, anyone who is evil, if they do not repent, they will not have eternal salvation. And so, Father, let us look at them from that perspective of knowing that, Lord, unless they themselves are living right with you, as your word says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? And that their souls are lost, that from that place we'll be able to show them love and compassion. Because we recognize the situation their soul is in. And so Father, help us for those that you want us to pray for. Help us to know how to pray for them. And in our dealings with people, help us to show love. The love that you call us to, so that it will be known that we are indeed your children. We thank you. Continue to show us mercy. Our families, mercy, O oh Lord Jesus, continue to fight all our battles and give us victory on every side. That you will be our great provider and that, Lord, you will be our great shepherd, leading us, O oh God, from, by the water, still waters, Lord, and providing all of our needs according to your great riches and glory. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're now going to go over our memory verse. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will not you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. We're personalizing it by saying, I am careful not to practice my righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. Therefore, I receive my reward from my Father in heaven. The Lord bless you. Until Thursday, be blessed and stay safe. Amen.